people, my name is Lexia and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video we're going to go back into my whole educational uh, non-random videos. I know last week's video was a little bit random and just kind of like a fun thing to do. But like I said in that video we're all in quarantine right now so we're all a little bored. Um, but anyway today we're going to be going over if milk snakes make good beginner snakes or not. Now, if you saw my last video like this I did, I did it over if hog noses make good beginner snakes or not. Um, that'll be linked right somewhere up here. I always forget which side it appears on. But uh, in that video, I went over five different things over how to like rate a snake and if it's good for you or not for a good beginner snake. And we're going to do that again today. So just like last time, we're going to go over handleability, um, care, overall pricing, um, upfront costs, and availability. And by care, I mean like hardiness and stuff like that. I forgot the word momentarily, but that's what we're going to go over in today's video. Not necessarily in that order, but we're going to hit all five of those points. And I'm going to give a one out of five rating on them. And basically just tell you if I think they're a good beginner snake or not. Now, I would like to say I'm in no way, shape, or form a professional. Uh, these are all just very... Um, they're opinions. They're all my opinions because I do own... Milk snakes. I own two of them, Honduran milk snakes, which you will see one of them in today's video. Unfortunately, the other one is eating right now, therefore, not going to pick her up or mess with her. So, yeah, we're just going to get in today's video, and if you're interested in milk snakes, please keep watching. If not, please keep watching. You've made it this far. So, getting into the video. Okay, so first thing I want to mention before we get into my five different topics is that there are about 20 subspecies of milk snake. This means that the care slash um, pricing will be different for each one. Now, as far as care goes, I basically mean like enclosure size where it's not going to vary a whole lot. It will vary based on the subspecies due to their size. For example, my Honduran milk snake is a whole lot bigger than a Sinaloan milk snake would be. Did I say that right? I think it's at the right. Anyway, they vary in size um, quite a bit, meaning my milk snakes, the Honduran milk snakes, get a lot larger than others. And whenever I hold mine and show them to you, I'll go into that a little bit deeper because that's more on the handleability section than the care. Care, they're not going to vary too much, so we're going to dive into that one first. First topic, care. Um, for milk snakes, I go ahead and give them a 5 out of 5 just like my hog nose, they are incredibly easy to care for. Um, milk snakes don't necessarily have a set humidity range or they don't have to have like heightened times of humidity throughout the day such as other snakes do. They are very easy to take care of. They can have either a dry substrate like aspen bedding or a semi-moist, can be moistened substrate such as cedar. Uh, mulch, which if you want to find out about different substrates, watch my last video, wherever that is as well. Um, as far as what they can be housed in, they can be housed in tanks and they can be housed in glass enclosures. Um, by tanks, I meant to say tubs, just so everyone's aware, tubs. They can be housed in tubs such as like breeding racks and things like that, relatively easy because they don't have to have a specific humidity and they don't really require a whole lot of how do I put this? They don't require a whole lot of height. They just need a specific floor space. Um, whenever going over what kind of enclosure you get, no matter what, just like with my hog nose, they need to be 100% sealed, 100% escape proof. I have had one of my milk snakes escape once whenever we first got her. She was incredibly small, like this long. She was hidden inside one of her logs. We thought we lost her, took the log out. She was still in the log. Turn around. Her head's popped out. Could have been a bad scenario, but wasn't. Now, they do, like I said, try to escape, so you need to make sure you have a sealed lid, or like in my tank for one of mine, as you can see, I have a sliding doors. Um, I have sliding doors on them, and I have a lock system in the middle to where neither of the doors can open as long as the lock is in place. So, as far as care goes, my alarm system just went off. I don't know if y'all heard that. But as far as care goes, I definitely give them a 5 out of 5 because they are incredibly easy to take care of. They eat like champs. They don't have a specific humidity. Like any type of substrate. Really? All you
all you really need, just like with every snake, is um, water dish and heating of some type. And by that, I mean either a heat pad, which I prefer on all my tanks. I have a heat mat under each of them. Or a basking spot, which again, milk snakes don't really need it. They don't even need UVB. Like most snakes, they don't. It helps, as you can see in that video clip I posted. I have one on my tank. But yeah, 5 out of 5 for care. So next topic that we're going to go over is hardiness, which also goes into the whole care aspect of it. Um, basically, they're incredibly hardy snakes because they require so little care. While it's not good to give them the absolute bare minimum, they will survive on the absolute bare minimum. Meaning that if you just have a water dish and one hide and a heat mat, they will do okay. Is it preferred? No, absolutely not. But they are incredibly hardy snakes. Um, and as I said earlier, they don't require UVB light like most snakes don't require UVB lights. They are simpler than hog noses, or they are simpler than ball pythons. Don't, not simpler than hog noses. They're about the same as hog noses in hardiness. As I said again earlier in care, either aspen shadings or cedar mulch are perfect for them. They don't have any issues with either. While I have uh, tried both in my two snake enclosures, my female seems to like cedar mulch better for some reason. I don't know if she just does better in it, sheds better, um, doesn't have any issues with that. And then my male likes burrowing more, I've noticed, so I have him in aspen bedding so it holds his tunnels. But yeah, as far as hardiness goes, 5 out of 5. They're great for care, great for hardiness. Alright, so for the next aspect of this video that we're going to go over, we're going to talk about handling. As you can see right now, he is relatively calm, but um, I would give milk snake handling, honestly, a 3 or 3.5 out of 5. Now you're going to ask, why do I do this? This is a calmer version of a Hondoran milk snake. My female would be flailing around everywhere and trying to get to the ground. As you can see, he's trying to get to the ground. This is kind of what they're known for. Whenever you're holding them, they will just try to go down or try to get out of your hand normally. He is doing really well right now. Um, I think he's actually just curious. He shed the other day, so he's wanting to be more active. As far as size goes, Hunter milk snakes get I'm trying to get him all in the <laughs> all in the video clip. They get relatively large. Um, he's smaller than my female though, so for handling that makes them kind of easy to handle in my opinion. Because they, if you drop them, please don't drop your snake. But if you drop them, you can keep track of them. They won't. Uh, they won't just disappear on you into the unknown. They will be easier to spot than, say, if you were to drop your hog nose in the carpet. Now, one thing that makes it why I give milk snakes a 3 or 3.5 out of 5 is that, as I said earlier, they're very aggressive eaters, which means they're more likely to bite than some other snakes. Um... This particular snake has actually bitten my mom before. Right after we cooked dinner, my mom made the mistake of wanting to hold him and he got a little bit bitey with her. As you can see, I'm just kind of letting him be in control. I will redirect him, but you can't fight with these guys too hard. They're pure muscle, which again makes handling hard. So basically, if you have a finger out or if you smell like food, or even if you don't wash your hands and smell like another snake, these guys are very likely to bite you. Um, because they are cannibals, they will bite you if they smell another snake. I'm realizing now that he's not all the way in the video clip. But good size makes them easy to handle. The fact that they're avid eaters makes them hard to handle, as I said earlier. Um... Yeah, there's not a whole lot to say on handleability other than they're not the easiest guys in the world to handle. So if you're looking for a snake that you can give to a child to hold or that, you know, you're giving to a child in general, 
I don't recommend these because, especially as um, hatchlings and juveniles, they bite a lot more. He has not bitten anyone recently, but as you can see, he's definitely in search of food right now. He's always in search of food, so if you move quickly or startle him in any way, the likelihood of him biting you is very high, opposed to like Wilbur who would grunt or false strike or basically do anything except bite you. So yeah, handling, this looks easy. I promise you it's not as easy as it looks though on a normal day, especially with my female. So once again, Ooh, I need to get my finger away from him. He just, he did a little thing with his jaw. But, um, once again, as far as handling goes, I give them a 3 or a 3.5 out of 5. Here he is, guys. Hope you enjoy seeing him, because I'm going to put him away now. Okay, so we have covered care, hardiness, handleability, and now we're going to go into my last two, which are availability and um, front up, up front pricing and costs. So first off, availability. Milk snakes are becoming more available, but they're not widely available, meaning you can't go into a pet store, thank God, and go buy, say, a Honduran milk snake just from Petco. Am I allowed to say that? Or, okay, but pet, the pet places. You can't go to the pet places and buy, um, milk snakes uh, just out of the blue, which I think is a great thing. But you can more than likely find them at um, reptile expos or specific breeders or small owned uh, exotic pet stores. So for reptile expos, they are there. They, you will find one there. Um, it might not be the type you want, meaning it could you could be wanting a Sinaloan and then you could come upon a Honduran. Or you could be wanting a Pueblin and then you could only have Sinaloans available. It depends on the expo, who's there at the expos, and um, how many are available. There will not be a lot of them at expos. There will be a lot per se, but not as many as um, ball pythons or other more widely known and wanted snakes. Um, corn snakes will be there, tons of all pythons will be there. You're probably going to find a decent amount of hog noses now because they are growing in availability. But as far as pet stores like hog noses, you are less likely to just find them there. So availability, 3 or 3.5 out of 5. Um, and if you're looking for one specific subspecies, it can get a little bit harder. It just depends on what you're wanting. Now, this goes straight into upfront uh, cost and pricing. So because they require such little as far as their enclosures go, that's really, really cheap. You could just get them, you know, the proper size glass enclosure or tub unit and have them in that with um, aspen bedding, which is a really cheap substrate. And then just an easy little, you know, box hide, um, nothing fancy if you don't want to and a couple logs, twigs, and a water bowl. Super simple and cheap. The most expensive part of getting one of those, kind of like with the hog nose, will either be the enclosure, depending on what type you want. As I said, you could go the super cheap route and get a tub, which super easy, super cheap. Or you could get a glass enclosure, which can get more expensive, depending on the gallon gallons um, of the enclosure. But Pricing of uh, milk snakes depends solely on their subspecies that you choose. For example, um, as seen in this picture, the Honduran milk snakes are okay in price. They can get a little pricey. The Puebloan milk snakes are kind of in the middle. If you look over here, as you can see, can get up to like 200 something. The Sinaloan milk snakes, even though they kind of only come in one color set, they can get really pricey in my opinion. Um, what I have is a albino tangerine milk snake, which is Boo, my female snake. And then Halo is a tricolor milk snake. So um, he's a little less expensive than Boo. Boo was between 200 and 27, or 250 and 275. That's generally how much they go for. My uncle got her for me, so I luckily did not have to pay for her 
or Halo. Um, they were both given to me by my uncle as a, uh, he didn't want them anymore. His kids did not like them, so he gave them to me. And that's how I have them now. They were originally foster snakes. I told my mom we were going to foster them. And it has been seven years now since we got them. So as you can see, fostering, uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Sorry, mom. But overall, I give um, a front cost and pricing either a 4.5 or a 5 out of 5. I'm going to go with 5 out of 5 because they are still less expensive than, say, certain ball python morphs or ball pythons in general. Um, so, yeah, going over it all again. Handleability, I give it a 3 or a 3.5 out of 5. As far as care, 5 out of 5. Hardiness, 5 out of 5. Upfront cost and pricing, 5 out of 5. And availability, 3.5 or 4 or 3. Somewhere in that range. Alright, so there's today's video. Hopefully you learned something. Um, I know it was kind of quick and I know I didn't go into extreme detail, but if you watched my first um, video about if a snake makes a good beginner snake or not, linking it again. If you watch that one, you'll see I kind of did the five points thing again. And as you also can see, I think milk snakes make decent beginner snakes, just not for children or not for someone who wants a snake that they can like have around them or just handle or just like have laying on them. Because handleability is honestly the hardest part of a milk snake in my opinion, especially Hondorans because they get a lot larger than others. Anyway. Please stay tuned for next week's video. I will hopefully be uploading on time. Um, last week's video or this video didn't get uploaded on time due to me remembering that I had classwork. Um, doing online college right now is pretty hard with my time management because I work and it's just been a pain in my butt. But you know, it is what it is. We're all in the middle of a pandemic. We're doing the best we can. Anyway, please stay tuned for next week's video, which will be another milk snake video, hopefully. And uh, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Bye.